In this video, I'll be building this desktop cannon, which I thought would be fun to design with interchangeable cartridges. These are loaded with flash cotton, a form of nitrocellulose that creates the fireball effect when the cannon is triggered. The cannon will be made mostly out of 3 quarter inch copper pipe and fittings. The cartridges are the first section that I'll assemble. I'll basically be making my own glow plug at the bottom of this 3 inch length of copper pipe. I found this tiny copper tubing at a hardware store and also these small copper tacks that fit in the end. The first step will be to solder this tack in place. This will be the center core of the glow plug. To insulate it from the rest of the cartridge, one of these plastic screw anchors is cut in half and slid down from the other end of the tube to act as a sheath over the tack. Consistency is important since I'm making multiple cartridges, so I've drilled a half inch deep hole in this block to hold the core at an exact depth. I've drilled a similar sized hole through the bottom of a 3 quarter inch end cap so it can slip over the sleeve on the core. On this same end cap, I've made a cut halfway down one side with a hacksaw blade. I'll show why this was done later. In the meantime, the cap is partially filled with hot glue or epoxy to cement the core in place. I only need the copper tube to extend slightly past the edge of the cap, so I'll go ahead and snip that off and reopen the end with a pair of pliers. Something in this cap needs to get hot enough to ignite the nitrocellulose charge. For that I'll be using a piece of nichrome wire. A huge amount of this wire can be found inside a hair dryer, more than you will probably ever need. Nichrome has a high electrical resistance, causing it to heat up very quickly when current is applied. One end of the wire is inserted into the end of the copper tube, where it can be crimped closed to hold it in place. Only about an inch and a half of wire is needed here. The end is bent upwards, such that it fits into the slot cut in the end cap. Now when the length of pipe that will make up the rest of the cartridge is pressed into the cap, it pinches the nichrome wire in the slot, making electrical contact. I'll use epoxy to permanently hold the two parts together. This cleans up pretty well. Trimming off the excess wire completes the cartridge. Once these cartridges have been partially filled with flash cotton, all that needs to be done to heat the nichrome wire is to connect one terminal of a battery to the copper tack and the other terminal to anywhere else on the metal casing. This completes the circuit and the shell fires. The first part for my desktop design is a small solid brass hinge. It needs to be sanded on all sides to remove the clear coat that's sprayed on from the factory and bring it down to bare metal. I then clamped this hinge into my vise alongside a metal rod which will act as a former. Applying pressure to the hinge and gently tapping it with a mallet allows the brass to bend smoothly over the rod's surface, resulting in one curved pedal and one that's still flat. The reason for bending the hinge is so that it fits snugly against a 3 quarter inch copper coupling, which will be used to mount the barrel and hold the cartridges later on. Some flux is applied to the coupling and the hinge placed over it. As the curved surface is soldered in place, it's important that the actual hinge mechanism is elevated at the top of the coupling so no solder flows into the joint, which would cause it to seize. After a lot of sanding to clean it up, this part came out really nice. It attaches to one end of this 4.5 inch long, 1 by 2 inch block of wood. I stained and sprayed a clear coat on this block earlier so it would look good for this project. Next the barrel will go into the far end of the coupling. This is a 4 inch length of copper pipe which is cemented into the fitting about a quarter inch deep. Epoxy is used here instead of solder because I couldn't heat the fitting again or it would melt free from the hinge. Now for the next part of this build, I'm going to need a copper sheet which I can make by cutting a section of pipe lengthwise and stretching it open with a screwdriver. Once I've got it as flat as I can that way, the rest of the work is done with a mallet and hammers. I'd like this sheet to be doubly strong, so once flat, I folded it into two layers. Some solder was used to hold the layers together, and it was then cleaned up on my wire wheel. The point of making this sheet was to cut out the piece that will hold the back of the cartridges in place and make electrical contact with that part of the shell. It's sort of flag shaped to match the curve the shells will move in as they're swung into firing position with the hinge. 
A few holes are drilled into the bottom of this piece so it can be screwed onto the back side of the block where the barrel is already mounted. With careful bending, this sheet of copper can be made to apply light pressure to the back of the cartridges after they've been pressed into the coupling behind the barrel and hinged upward to lock them in place. Electrical contact is now being made to both essential parts on the cartridge. The new copper plate is making contact with the end of the core, and the body of the shell is contacting the inside of the coupling, which in turn is soldered to the hinge. This wire is from the cord for the hair dryer that I took apart earlier. It will work perfectly to make my connections. The first section of wire is sandwiched below the hinge and clamped down tight enough that it won't easily come free. The same is done for the other wire beneath the copper plate. With both leads connected, this portion of the build is complete. The firing stand is all that remains. This is a 1x3 board that is 12 inches long. The first step is to glue two 6 volt batteries to the very end. The cannon could fire with only one, but there would be some lag as the wire heats that can be avoided by using two. I'll be using this momentary button switch to fire, mounted in this metal T bracket. The furthest hole in the end needs to be widened so that the button can fit inside. I also want to mount it vertically so the end of my bracket is bent 90 degrees in my vise. The button is then fastened securely using the nuts that came with it. The whole bracket mounts to the baseboard parallel to the batteries. A second bracket is mounted to the opposite side of the far end. This is to hold the cannon itself using one final screw, which allows it to swivel up and down if desired. There's only one step left, and that's to run the wiring. The leads coming off the cannon need to connect to opposite terminals on separate batteries as shown, one to a positive connection and the other wire to the second battery's negative connection. These were soldered in place so they wouldn't easily come off. Now the open terminals on each battery are wired to either side of the firing switch so that the circuit between them will be closed when the button is pressed. My cartridges are loaded with flash cotton and I'm ready to fire. This video was sponsored by Audible.com. I always enjoy having Audible as a sponsor because in my experience they really are the best website around for audiobooks. Most recently, I've been listening to the book Adrift, which is a true story about a man who survived 76 days alone on a life raft. Before starting this book, I listened to The Martian, and before that, Robinson Crusoe. You might be noticing a theme with the sort of books I go for. If you haven't used Audible before, you can get any one of these audiobooks for free as a new member by visiting the link audible.com forward slash nighthawk. They can be listened to from your phone or tablet, or just from your computer, as I'll sometimes do when I'm editing videos. There's over 180,000 other audiobooks on Audible that you can choose from, so you're sure to find many others you'll like. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave me a comment. I always love hearing your feedback. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Nighthawk in Light, for more, and be sure to subscribe to email updates so you're sure to get the alerts when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.